We're talking defensive backs on today's P&W NFL draft rankings for the 2024 class cornerbacks, safeties, and sleeper DBs right now. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next-level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We love our everydayers, and we love it when you subscribe. Please subscribe. It helps us out tremendously on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. We're doing DBs, talk to me, Matt, about yeah. this DB class. We're going to go corners, then safeties. How do you see this defensive back class? feels like a, a little weaker than than normal potentially I, i'm not impressed with the safeties overall to be honest with you nor do i think there's a high-end talent at that position we'll get to them later i do like the corner class i mean i think you could do really well on day two round three maybe even in the round four particularly for nickels that will be useful good athlete tough guys types type players i don't see a sauce Gardner or stingley or jalen ramsey in this class and to be very honest i'm sure we'll dig right into it now my top three if you ask me tomorrow i might have them in the total opposite order if you ask me a week from now they might be the same I, i'm all over the place with my top three because i like all three quite a bit but none of them are superstars who is your number one cornerback in 2024 man Reluctantly, but I keep going back to how well I like what he can do is Iowa's Cooper DeJean. Some see him as a safety. He's a little stiffer, a little straight line-ish compared to top corners out there. But he also has not got a chance to work out. That's coming like any day now. So that's finally on the horizon for him. He is big. He's a great at every sport type of guy. Good football IQ, returner physical as could be like I don't like to get too enamored with things like this but if you YouTube Cooper DeJean highlights as a basketball player like his dunks you might agree with me that he's number one we've we've talked about this before with his dunking ability and it's funny because his dunking ability goes into what my scouting report is for Cooper DeJean and I am down on him compared to where you're at by the way he's Mm -hmm. a good kick returner um Which has does, more value now. Does the new rules, the the return game, you, you don't draft the corner in the first round because he's a good kick returner, right? But course, added value, yeah. you know, if you're if there's a tie, maybe you go to uh to DeGene with his return ability, does kickoff return ability. I've heard people say that that's ah, more like a punt return now, or oh, it's actually like a true running back position now. You want to put it more of a running back style player back there. So we'll see how teams treat it. We'll see if teams treat it stronger in the draft with return men and coverage guys potentially, and how they're going to deploy their units on uh, in the return game and in, in the kickoff game with the, mm-hmm. with the new rules. So that'll be an interesting wrinkle there with Dejean. His Real quick, du- I was going to throw one thing out there because I think that'll really factor in like fifth round running backs, you know, like first round corners. It's not going to make or break right. them as returners, as and you it's mentioned, a, but yeah, it's, a, it's not the deepest overall draft class on day three either. So I think that no, it's bad at the special teams, heavy day three yep. around the league too. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Agreed. As far as Cooper Dejean goes, there's a lot to like, but there's one element that I don't like. And you see it in his dunk highlight reel. You see it in his game tape. And you mentioned it a little straight line-ish, a little tight in the hips. And as far as man coverage goes, breaking on the football, I just don't see it with Cooper DeJean. And I, I don't think I would even draft him in the first round. If wow, you're playing okay. a lot of man, if you're playing a lot of man coverage. Now, if you're playing uh cover three heavy, playing a lot of zone, he's really smart. He's good with his eyes in the backfield, he can make plays on the ball. There's a lot to like with him, but you see it with his dunking. His dunking isn't the one-footed jump, glide through, smooth. It's power dunking. It's two-footed jumps. Boom, straight line-ish, power. Yeah, his dunks yeah, are yeah. going to be great when he works out. His 40 times probably going to be great. 
I hope he does agilities. And I bet he doesn't do agilities at his little extra pro day here in April. And we'll see if that turns out to be true this week. Um, because I think by April 10th, everyone's going to be done with their extra workouts. For this. I think there's like Johnny Newton, defensive tackle, Cooper DeGene. There is a couple other players that still haven't done that. Latham hasn't, but I don't think he's going to because he's yeah. not going to run well. <laughs> Mention that Yale tackle too, because we have nothing to go on. Uh, good point, Karen Omegaji. It's like people people are talking about him in the second round. It's like uh, I saw his tape against Yale. He's better than those guys, but of course he's better than those guys. No senior bowl because he was hurt. No work said, out to go on. How you spend a day two pick even on a guy like that? Even though he yeah. looks the part and has athleticism and long arms, so at least get some workout numbers on him. So uh, those will be key, and I think it's key for for Cooper DeGene. We'll see how he works out, and, and I'm really interested to see some agilities from him because I, I don't see the agility on tape. I don't see the break on the football, which really worries me, and I think he might end up playing inside in sort of a maybe outside-inside hybrid nickel role. You said there's no Jalen Ramsey in this class. We've talked about this before. Uh, my nickname for Cooper DeGene, Palin Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a similar style of play. You know, he can play near the line of scrimmage. I love your observations about the dunks, and he is a power downhill guy. He'll tackle. You wouldn't draft him as high as you need to for him to be a safety, but I do think it's a nice fallback option compared to some of these other pure corners. Potentially the best safety in the class, though, too. I so, would think like, so, yeah. Yeah, so maybe you put him on the other list, put him number one. He's not the number one corner for me, though, for those reasons, but I think a better zone corner than a man corner in the NFL. Maybe ends up being a big nickel hybrid role player. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. with Cooper DeGene, I think it's going to be very team-specific on him. Very team specific. Yeah. I mean, Fangio probably likes him more than press man cover guys do, or, you know. Yeah. More than the, uh, yeah, um, just man heavy. Like, it's just funny because I think Belichick's not in the league anymore, obviously, but I think Belichick would have really liked him in some ways, but not as a outside corner. Not as Christian, not Christian Gonzalez. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. 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 I agree with you. Well said. Cornerback two on your top five, man. Again, he is a super strong case to be number one. It's Quinion Mitchell from Toledo. Yeah, he played against small school, but he dominated. Went to Senior Bowl, dominated. Didn't really play hardly any man coverage at Toledo, but what we saw at the Senior Bowl, dominated. Cocky, super athletic, long. He's really good. I think Quinion Mitchell right now, if I had to bet, is the first not only corner, but defensive player off the board in the draft. I mean, he's I just agree it all together. The tape is really good. He killed it at the senior bowl. He killed it with workouts. Like there, there's a lot of boxes checked for him. Height, weight, speed. He's kind of got it all. So uh, yeah. yeah, I like Quinion Mitchell a lot. We'll see how high all these guys go. And uh, he's my number one cornerback. And, and when I talk about Cooper DeGene, about first round pick, I, I would probably put him high as a second round grade. And, you know, you never have exactly 32 first round grades and usually more like 20 first round get grades. Mm -hmm. So I, I think Cooper DeGene for me is a little bit after that, but he still might be a first round player, just not a first round clean first round grade for me. Quinion Mitchell does have a clean first round grade. Talk to me about your cornerback three in this class, man. Yeah, Terry and Arnold. And just because I did have DeGene, like I said, today, I switched these all the time, these top three, ahead of these two. I don't think he's going to get drafted ahead of these two. And frankly, if I was a team Atlanta that was going to take the first defensive player off the board, I would be much more comfortable taking Mitchell or Arnold than any of the edge guys. I don't know if you agree with that. I. Uh I'm excited about Dallas Turner's potential, what he could be. He's not quite mm -hmm. there yet, but just it, just the possibility of using those raw materials and turning him into a, a stud rusher that some guys just don't have the ability to be, and he does, I think Dallas Turner is interesting enough to me that I think the value of the position would put him over in some cases. I hear but, it's they're just yeah you're the D linemen are just not as clean it's it's yeah you know, they're you not pick great. your pick your flavor sort of a sort of a group and Arnold does everything I mean he seems to get better and better and better everyone was always focused on Kool Aid but I think Arnold's the better player the better athlete he'll tackle he plays the slot I mean I, I think Arnold's a really good prospect too those Alabama guys are playing for Nick Saban they're just well schooled yeah. and they're 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 good football players. Uh, next, we'll get to corners four and five. Does Kool-Aid make that top five? Who are the favorite sleepers in this class at cornerback and safety as well? Next. 
Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson's brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC. Member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Here we go. We've got Cooper DeGene, Quinion Mitchell, Terry on Arnold, who's cornerback four in this class, man. This one's easy for me, and that's Nate Wiggins of Clemson. And frankly, you know, back to our previous conversation, if you're a pure man team and you want to press guys, I would have Wiggins over DeGene. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it, he's fast. He's very fluid. I think he's very aggressive, except playing the run. I mean, he kind of has a little bit of that Dion feel to him. Where he's 107 him... pounds, so like You're right, he's, right, right. He's, uh, my my <laughs> when I do my scouting reports, I kind of have like a one word, one phrase scouting report for guys, and uh, it was a a broom handle with wheels, basically. That's that's what that's what good wheels though. And he's got crazy wheels, you know. He's yeah. got. <laughs> Uh, he's an effort player too, which I like. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got the thin frame, and he's got shorter arms, even though he's six one, which is weird. So he's just got an odd build, but you know, a lot of athleticism. You know, and the really fast guys tend to have this. Cooper DeGene has it. Um, uh, Wiggins has it. Is just the long legged, the stride can sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, hurt you in the in the quicks, in the lateral, in the break department uh, at times. And that's why I like Quinion Mitchell so much. Cause he doesn't have that problem, even though he's got a ton of speed and four, three speed versus Wiggins. So you do see some trouble getting out of the brakes at times and some lateral quicks. And, you know, he might get bullied at times because of how slim he is, but yeah, I think he's a first round guy and I think he'll end up going in the first round. And, and, uh, who's your fifth cornerback then? You mentioned, you know, the, the how they're coached at Alabama, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid McKinstry is the poster child. I mean, he's been out there a lot starting as a true freshman, in the secondary of Nick Saban is kind of almost all you need to know. I mean, right. he's not an elite athlete, but he's tough as could be, you know, just, just ran a 40 with still a Jones fracture in his foot just to show teams that he can move well enough. I mean, he's a good athlete, not great. So I actually like Kool-Aid more than you. And I would, yeah. I would flip Kool-Aid. I, I wouldn't flip him necessarily with DeGene and make him one and make DeGene five, but I would put De, DeGene down to five and I'd slide Kool-Aid up to three and just have the, those Alabama corners back to back. And athletically, yeah. they're not too far off from each other. Uh, Kool-Aid didn't run at the combine uh, at, at his pro day. It was somewhere reported between four, four, seven, five or four, five, oh, something like that. And that's what yeah, you kind of, yeah. um, you know, not an elite athlete, but r- really good corner. Um, pretty sticky in man coverage. I think he's good in zone coverage. He's smart. He'll come up and tackle you. I think he could be uh, an elite nickel as well, but he's got size to play on the outside and enough speed to play on the outside. So a versatile player that I think fits every scheme and a lot of teams are going to like him, which is why he doesn't get out of the first round. But, you know, athletically, maybe he doesn't end up being, you know, a super high first round pick either. In all likelihood, these, these five guys all go somewhere in the first round. Maybe someone creeps into the top of round two. And one last thing about Kool-Aid is, I'd be really shocked if he's a bust, you know, like he might be a real solid number two corner, but because of his head, his experience, I think he's going to be a, a solid player at work. Yeah. I like, I like that I, high floor, but not the highest ceiling. Yeah. Like, yeah. Solid number two guy. You can plug him in and, and you'll be good. Yeah. I mean, throw him on the chiefs. He wins a couple rings and plays for their eight years. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Exactly. And he's going to go in that range too. Yeah. And, yep. an easy pick. If you're the chiefs, and you're like, all right, cool. We just trade away Sneed. Let's draft Kool-Aid. And we can start day one for us. We're good. Let's roll. Lions, Niners, Chiefs. Yeah. Exactly. Love those bits for, for Kool-Aid. And, you know, he's, he's like a – those playoff teams, uh, you know, the the Ravens do this every year at the end of the first round, right, is they just – a really good player that's part of a championship 
caliber roster kind of just slides to him and they go draft Tyler Linderbaum or whatever, you know, and it's like, okay, we got a really good player. He's not the most body beautiful guy. He's not a top 10 guy, but he, he fits into a winning organization. Yeah. And the, cool. the prospect just keeps winning and winning and, you know, and it's a part of it. It's your top five. Anybody just missed the list for you? Yeah, there are. Uh, and this, and this, I'm not sure. I think he goes by Ennis, not Enos. Rake Straw from Missouri. Um, I'm just pulling up a list so I don't Rick's miss anyone. Are, I, but that, kind of similar to to Kool Aid in that, um, you know, not a not an elite athlete. Right. He'll tackle you, and he's pretty good at a lot of things. And if you don't get Kool Aid in the first, maybe you get Rake Straw in the second. Mel Kiper can't say enough good things about TJ Tampa. I get that too. I mean, he's got rare length and I think he's going to be a good player. Kind of has a little bit of a Joey Porter Jr. vibe to me. Mm. I love Max Melton. I mean, I think he's a day two guy all day long, but he's a yeah. super athlete that is nasty slot or outside. He's one of my favorites. Like I kind of my fingers crossed for Steelers in round two with Max Melton. I, I and, feel the same way. We, he's been yeah. in my mocks for the 49ers in round two, and I see him in round three sometimes in mock drafts. I'm like, I don't think he's going to get in round three. He worked out too so. well. Again, a uh, guy that play outside could probably play inside, not afraid to support the run, uh, like Max Melton quite a bit. How about uh, how about Sanders still? The, That's the next name I was going to bring up. Yep. The, the most pure slot in this class. You want a nickel corner, there's your guy on day two. Leader, tough, blitzer. Stick his face in with Derrick Henry coming around the corner without any, you know, reservations at all. I mean, it, yeah, he's a little smaller and he's just a slot, but that's okay. I mean, he's bigger, better version of a Mike Hilton or a guy like that. You know, and maybe that's slot. why a team like let's say you're Atlanta at pick. Yeah, maybe that's why you wait on corner and you go for you swing for the fences with Dallas Turner because you can mm -hmm. get one of these other second round corners where you can't get that level of athlete on the edge in round two. Yeah, and you're probably the same with the Niners, but I think there's a really good chance the Steelers take a day two corner. So I've been digging into them more than even the top guys, and I'm liking that group more and more. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, where the day two edges, eh, I think you're right. If you're splitting ties that way, I would rather have a round one edge, round two corner than vice versa probably. Yeah, I'm with you. And uh, it's a it's a solid class, not spectacular class, of course. Mm -hmm. Really good players and a ton more nickels, too, that, that we haven't really talked about here. Yeah, a lot um, of I like. Do you have a, a sleeper that you like that's maybe not a day two guy? Um, there's a bunch. The, the one I picked for the article was Chris Abrams' drain. Um, kind of like the Alabama situation. He's Robin to Rake Straw's, you know, Batman there. But Smart also can play the slot a little on the lean side. Um, looks like he's going to not bust. You know what I mean? Let's move on to this safety class. Uh, I, zero safeties in the first round, unless you're playing like yeah. the unit safety, right? I think that's a slam dunk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, the guy who, the guy who's really high on everybody's list. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's the number one on your list as well with Tyler Newman out of Minnesota. It, is. But it didn't work out great either. So, like, I don't even know where the safeties start coming off the board in this class. Yeah, I, I used to think he might be in the mix for first five picks in the second day. And I don't think that's the case, to be honest with you. I think he's more of a mid-second rounder. Maybe he even goes to a playoff team because I think he's pretty safe and you could probably plug him in in his first year and be more than fine. Um yeah, 13 career interceptions is certainly noteworthy, you know, good size, but I don't think he's, you know, Justin Simmons. That's one thing that, that happens in the draft process. And maybe you overthink it a little bit, but you get your hands on a lot of footballs. You're a super productive player and like, okay, best safety in the class, 13 career interceptions, right? Got some size, six, one, 200 pounds. And then you go through the draft process and you're like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe he's not a, a superstar yeah. player and kind of falls in the draft. And then a team drafts him and they're like, Oh, yeah, he's still getting his hands on footballs in the NFL, too. Yeah, right, right, right. And it'd probably be a productive starter, and that, that's great. You know, he's not Sean Taylor or Derwin James or Minka Fitzpatrick that's going to get drafted super high or freaky, but he's good at what he does. Pretty chalky uh, safety one in this class. Let's get the rest of Matt Williamson's top safeties in the NFL draft and a sleeper safety to look out for on day three as well. Next. This episode of PNW is brought to you by Game Time, and now Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace 
of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier for your favorite baseball teams. Prices on Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to first pitch with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. And you can save up to 60% off by buying those last-minute sports, concerts, comedy, theater tickets near you. You can even buy tickets up to an hour after, uh, say, a, a ball game starts. There's zone deals, flash deals, all-in prices. You know you're getting a great deal before you check out. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. See the seat. You know what the view is going to be before you arrive at the game. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use Locked On NFL promo code for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This episode is also. Brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning that Lombardi trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Wouldn't NFL GMs love it if it was as easy as eBay Motors to go pick exactly what they (laughs) need for their football teams? Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights. Maybe you just need some wiper blades. Whether you're into speed, power, style, whatever it is, eBay Motors has you covered. Over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that W. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, we've got Tyler Newbin, Minnesota safety is safety number one. Who is the second ranked safety for this draft class, man? Yeah, this is a guy I like quite a bit and might hit bigger than a Newbin if everything aligns. It's Jaden Hicks from Washington State. I mean, he's 6'2, he's over 210 pounds. And yes, he's a strong safety in a traditional way, but he played a lot of free this past year. He has a corner background. Maybe he's a dime linebacker, real good tester. Uh, considered a really smart and good communicator type guy. Maybe he's a nickel linebacker and, you know, does, but he, I think he can play man coverage against tight ends. You know, I don't want to play a man coverage against Wes Welker or on the outside, but there's a lot to like here. There's a lot of traits. The big safety is a dying breed in the NFL. I know. College yeah. game is not giving us large cover people. The, the receivers are getting smaller. The corners are getting smaller. The defensive tackles are getting smaller. Like it's, you know, it's a speed game in college, and uh, it's rare to see a guy who's highly ranked. You know, there was Hamilton a couple of years ago, and, you know, he was a first-round guy, but you just don't see the big 6'2-plus, 210-pound-plus safeties anymore. Yeah, right, and I think he moves well enough to get away with it, though. Javon Bullard out of Georgia. A lot of people like him, uh, but nobody likes him enough to put him really high in their rankings. Yeah. Uh, 5'10 and a half, 198 pounds out of Georgia. If I were to redo these, which we do these a second time, my number five guy, I would move up to three. We'll get to him in a minute. But Bullard's really solid. I mean, I I described him as kind of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. You know, I mean, uh, was uh, had a lot of responsibility in that Georgia defense. I mean, he's the typical safety that can play the slot, which is becoming very, very important nowadays. I said the word solid at least once or twice in his, in his write-up. I mean... He's good. He's not great at anything. Malik Mustafa is your fourth safety. He's one of my favorites. I mean, such a big hitter. Kind of a throwback, you know, strong safety, you know, stout, 5'10", but 209 pounds. He's got some athleticism, too, but like a rocked-up hitter. Uh, He's fun to watch, and uh, he'll be good on special teams, and I think he'll be a starting safety potentially in the NFL as well. Fun tape to watch. I just don't know how teams are going to love him and and how he's actually going to go. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know much more to add than that. I mean, 5'10", 209, and that's what he looks like. Muscles on top of muscles, mm-hmm. kind of a Bob Sanders playing style, just runs through a wall. I'm sure he'll be an awesome special teamer, but I bet he's also not for everybody. So you teased this one with Cole Bishop, your fifth safety out of Utah, uh, getting a little helium here late in the process, mm-hmm. and um, I know – Jim Nagy, who does the the Senior Bowl, the director of the Senior Bowl, is really big on Cole Bishop and is is 
kind of shouting from the rooftops right now that everyone's sleeping on him. He probably has the highest upside of any of these guys. Plus, Utah defenders just tend to hit. You know, I mean, they're well coached there. He's got great size. He has the best measurables. Actually, he has some of the best measurables of any player at any position, to be very honest with you. And prototype, right? He ran four fours at six two two oh six. I mean, that jumps uh, are unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot to bring there, and he's not bad on tape at all, and he's developing. So, I might roll the dice on him higher than, and maybe even in round two, you know, depending on the team. And the positionless football on offense means you got to be a little positionless on defense too. Yeah. So maybe that helps guys like Cooper DeGene. Maybe it helps guys like Cole Bishop or uh, Javon Bullard. You just mentioned like if you can line up in the slot and man up a guy and you can also play in deep coverage and you can also come up and support the run, that's going to help you. And, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of tweeners in this class that teams are going to like more than, than we know because they like how they fit into their system and how they want to use them. And it's hard for us from the outside to kind of look and say, okay, this is, this is why they like this safety to be used specifically for this football team. Yeah. And I do think this applies to Bishop, but I'm glad you mentioned that with the gene, just to rewind a second, because on my, our Steeler show, you know, the Steeler secondary needed a lot, especially coming into the, the off season, I just kind of thought, well, Maybe this week against the Ravens, DeGene's going to play against Mark Andrews. You know, next week against the Bengals, he's going to be an outside corner and cover three. You know, just it, some of these guys, you can just kind of fill them in whatever blank you need that certain week. And you got to cover these big slots. Almost every team yeah, now yeah. has some version of whether it's Travis Kelsey, Cooper Cup, you know, some player that they're trying to get matchups in the slot with. And yep. you just can't have a weak defender in the slot anymore. No, and we mentioned this with the corners. There's a lot of true slots in this corner class, including Saints drill, but they don't go guard Welkers anymore. They guard Kelsey's and the five nine, 181 pounds of slot only corner. They could be going the way of a dinosaur pretty soon. Well, yeah, because you got to be quick, but you gotta... and they run right at you too. You can right. jump's then... gonna come at you ten times in a row. You know. <laughs> So you're you're smaller and then you're quick, but you got to take on blocks and, and tackle people in the run game. And then they're going to hit you with the slot fade, too. So you got to be fast. So you can't be like the five nine guy who only runs a, a four six. Yeah. And I also think those slot only corners don't have long shelf life. They get so beat up and they're little, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, who's your favorite sleeper at safety in this class, man? Yeah, this is a guy I didn't know anything about, but, you know, did some digging like, boy, I'm Katan. A lot of Poe from Oregon. I mean, he's huge. He's 6'2", over 215 pounds. Good athlete, you know, and he has some done some deep stuff, but he's going to be more of the tight end running back, cover the flat blitzer type of guy, old school, not Cam Chancellor, but sort of that mold. I, I just thought he was an interesting player that may take two years till we hear his name as a starter, but he could become a starter. Yeah, with all the smaller DBs coming out, Matt. I yeah, can yeah. You, you gravitate to the few bigger body guys that are out there. Exactly, exactly. And I know Kalen Bullock is out there and Cameron Kitchens and they're bigger name guys, but I wasn't blown away by them. You know, those are guys who have been on the list forever. Yeah, Kitchens uh, didn't help himself with the pre-draft no. process either with, you know, the, the workout numbers. And and that's tough. Like if you in this day and age in the NFL, if you're running four sixes and you're a DB, you're just not going to get drafted early. Yeah, I mean, unless you do a lot of other things, you know, and that was one of the things I didn't like about Bullock is I thought he was a finesse middle of the field, didn't want to hit people, deep middle, middle field, you know, deep center fielder type, but not as aggressive as I'd want or as versatile. A quick note here, because we have a minute, uh, the the overall athleticism in the NFL is getting crazy on the defensive side of the ball, too. Uh, yeah. But like, what used to be workout numbers that are like, oh wow, okay, he, you know, safety ran four five eight. That's good athleticism for a safety. And That'll work. Like, oh my God, this guy. I don't, I don't know. I don't even want to draft this guy. He ran. He didn't <laughs> run four fours. You know, it's yeah. it's wild. even edge guys. You see an edge guy that runs a four eight. You're like, hopefully this guy never has to run a forty yard dash in his life. But it's like, oh, but maybe he's a little too slow. He only ran a four eight at two hundred and seventy pounds. And both those examples are perfect. Of. Well, he better be good on special teams. Probably going to live on special teams yeah. the rest of his life. You know, four, five, eight safeties. Like, well, maybe he's our fourth guy, emergency dude, but he better be a core special teamer. You know, yeah, it's not so great. Uh, thanks everybody for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We've got more draft rankings. In fact, we've got one position group left. That is linebackers. Uh, we've got mock drafts to come. All the latest news around the NFL as we get ready for the 2024 NFL draft right here. 
Peacock and Williamson.